Good evening, everyone. I'm the town moderator. I would like to bring the annual town meeting of May 23rd, 2023 of Town of Waitley to order and ask for the reading of the warrant from the town clerk. Pursuant to the within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the town of Waitley by posting attested copies of the same at the town office building, post office, transfer station, and S. White Dickinson Memorial Library in said town seven days at least before the date of the meeting as within directed. Signed, Constable of Waitley, Thomas Mahar, 510-23. Thank you. Now, it's a little known fact that the reason the constable must warn you is that originally town meeting was compulsory. And at that very same time, it was also compulsory to start with a lecture of not less than two hours by the most <laughs> prominent elected official in the area. And so here to uh, restore that tradition is Re State Representative Natalie Blay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Apparently it's now optional and she's declined. Okay. <laughs> May we proceed to Article 1. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to accept the annual reports of the officers of the town and to hear any other reports of the boards and committees. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? The motion passes nearly unanimously. Okay. Um, at this point, I would like to invite our chair of the select board, Joyce Palmer Fortune, to present the annual report. Okay. Is it up there or here? Well, from wherever you prefer. Okay. I'll stay sitting. Um, I think people assembled here will already know this, but our town's employees are awesome. Yes, it's okay to clap. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, and they're dedicated. They're hardworking. Uh, they're professionals. Um, the most awesomest of the awesome is the person that we're dedicating the town report to this year. Um, this is uh, Lynn Sibley. Yes, it's okay to clap again. <laughs> I am so proud and happy to dedicate this year's town report to Lynn. I, I did this once before, maybe, oh, I don't know, more, more than 10 years ago, uh, but we had to be a little stealthy about it. I had to get the help of other town uh, officials to make it be a surprise at the end. Um, but Lynn has been serving the residents of Waitley in some role or another since about 1977. Um, and even now in retirement, she is uh, continuing to help train folks who are moving into some of the positions that she has occupied over the years. Um, and I have to say, without her willingness to do this training, we would not be able to fill some really important positions in our town. Um, that's what I mean by having really dedicated town employees. And we're really going to, to miss Lynn. We've been so lucky to have her all these years. Her service has been extraordinary. It speaks to the breadth and the width of her knowledge. Um, and all the while when she is treating people as members of the public, she is universally uh, thought of, um, she's us universally said to be someone who makes you feel heard. Uh, and that's really important that everyone be heard. Um, I think I listed in the, the dedication page all the various well, maybe not all, <laughs> possibly an incomplete list of things that she has done in her years of service to the town. And I want to take this opportunity to thank Lynn uh, and have the best of luck for herself and her family in her retirement. Thank you and congratulations, Lynn. Uh, at this point, I understand that uh, Mr. Don Skrosky, our former Whaley Elementary principal and co-superintendent co of the Frontier Regional School System, has a point of order to make regarding the reading of the motions in abbreviated form. Don? 
All right. This, uh, this motion would mean that we do not need to read out each motion, each article in full, but simply need to say, uh, Mr. Moderator, I move Article 2, for example. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? The motion carries, and we move on to the next article. In that case, Mr. Moderator, I move Article 2. Second. Is there any discussion regarding Article 2? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 2 carries by majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 3. Second. Article 3 has been moved and second. Is there any questions or discussion? Seeing none. If all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 3 passes by majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 4. Second. Article 4 has been moved and second. Is there any questions or discussion regarding Article 4? If not, and in the interest of having a well-balanced bodies, uh, use your other hand to raise your card if you vote support. And all those opposed? All right. A well-balanced majority has voted in favor of Article 4. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 5. Is there a second? Oh, second. second. <laughs> Oops. Article 5 has been moved and second. Is there any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 5 passes by majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move that we consider Article 6. Second. Article 6 has been moved and seconded. <coughs> are there any questions regarding any of these revolving funds? There are. Uh, let me start with Don Sluter, please, and then, and then Fran. I can holler loud enough. Oh, that's all right. Um, it says here that the school committee members uh, get paid 423.31 per year. And I've been on the Franklin County Tech School Committee for 20 years and have not received any money at all. All right. Well, that will be a very good thing to take into consideration when we get to Article 7. Thank you. <laughs> Fran Fortino. I had a question as to how the uh, recycling and solid waste revolving fund, and for that matter, any of these caps were determined. Is there someone on the uh, select board who can uh, speak to that or the administration? Uh, as far as I know, they are the same as last year. That they, that they, uh, My understanding is, is this working? My understanding is that they're the same as the previous year from past discussions that have been had with the various, between the select board and various boards and committees. This is a financial question. Would anyone on the finance committee like to elaborate? Is this on? Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, I cannot elaborate on this because this these spending limits, as uh, Fred mentioned, um, they're just a duplicate of what happened last year. What I think needs to be here is a balance on all of these accounts, not just a spending limit, so that um, the voters of the town know exactly what is in each of these accounts. And I'm sure that we saw that during um, the Finance Committee meetings. Um, but unfortunately, it did not get onto this page. All right. Are there other questions or discussion? You're also free to may make I, a motion. May I ask a question? Oh, please go ahead. Uh, Mr. Fortino, are you uh, suggesting that the amounts should be higher or lower, or just questioning the establishment? How they are determined. Okay. Thank you. 
fine with it. Just want to know how it happens. Okay. Thank All you. All right. Has your question been answered to your satisfaction? Okay. Are there any other questions or discussion? If not, we'd like to put Article 6 to a vote. All those in favor of Article 6, raise your card. All those opposed? Motion carries by majority vote, and we now move on to Article 7. And Mr. Moderator, uh, I move we take up Article 7. Second. Uh, Article 7 has been moved and seconded. And uh, I believe Don has spoken to the question of compensation for different school committees. Is there um, a question you wish, wish to pose, Don, in this regard? Yeah, I don't know if this is an oversight. I unfortunately mm -hmm. never paid much attention to uh, previous Article 7s and uh, didn't realize that most school committee members do get paid. And I just would like an answer if there is an answer. Thanks. Is there uh, anyone who can speak to this? Yeah, to I this? believe that this is just for Waitley School Committee. We don't have any jurisdiction over county technical school well, but that compensation would have to come from that committee which is under the auspices of the county not the town okay um, yeah. would someone in the finance then, committee like to address the issue yeah I'll just speak to this um, this has been an oversight, without question. Um, you put in the same amount of time, effort, I, I believe, as our um, elementary school um, reps. So um, I think moving forward that this should be part of the budget. Any, any, anybody want to speak to that? Anybody else? Yeah. Um, I can tell you it's never come up, ever. No one's ever asked the question, and so. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want any money. I just wanted that to be on. Thank oh, you. you don't want any money? <laughs> oh, oh okay. never mind. <laughs> Going forward, I would like some. Okay. Hold on, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator? Yes. Um, may I, right, the moderator recognizes Bob Holla. Chair of the school committee. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Can hold you, on. Can you yeah. wait till we have a microphone? Uh, Bob, yes, no. I can't hear you. So no, if what you have to say you. is important, uh, wait for the microphone so that people at home can hear. Don, that. you're going to have to fight with Billy Smith. He hasn't been paid for 45 years at Frontier. <laughs> I would Bob, I request that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, before fisticuffs break out, then, um, uh, would it be appropriate to say that if someone did want to change an Article 6 or Article 7, they should approach the Finance Committee during the um, budget review season? Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So please speak with the Chair of the Finance Committee to be notified of, of those meetings. All right. Um, in that case, we now need to vote on Article 7, unless there's more questions or discussion. Please go ahead. There's more questions. I'd like to know if all of the positions listed here are subject to the COLA, or if that's only some of them. That's all. That's all. They're all COLA. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the word from the Finance Committee is that the increase from last year is entirely due to the 5.5% COLA. Have I got that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Further questions? All right. In that case, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? The motion carries by a majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 8. Second. Uh, Article 8 has been moved and seconded. Is there any questions or discussion? Oh, come on. We've got a good inquisitive group here today. <laughs> Nothing? 
All right. Uh, barring no discussion, then, uh, all those in favor, please raise your card in support. All those opposed, Article 8 passes by majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move we take up Article 9. All right. Article 9, has it been moved? Has it been seconded? Second. It's second. And uh, I now lend the mic over to the chair of the Finance Committee, Paul Antea, to present the budget. Okay. For this year's budget, um, first of all, the Finance Committee would like to thank all the department heads, uh, as well as select board, um, for, for this whole process. Cause Without everybody's help, we don't get here. And especially, I want to reach out to uh, Brian Domina and Amy and that crew um, for everything they've done. So let's start off. Um, general government. We have a budget of $564,275 for an increase of 7.54%. Any, any questions? Any comments? Could you get? We need to repeat the question. Okay. Would you would you repeat the question, please? Of course I would. What caused the Conservation Commission to go up so much? Well, seeing how we have the Conservation Commission here. Okay. So the Conservation Commission went up 585 percent because I think we had to, um, we had to put money over for an expert. Um, that we share with other towns um, to be able to oversee the process. If I'm, if you guys re rem remember that, Tommy? We're in the Conservation Commission is anticipating that we are going to be required to have an expert that we are going to share with some other towns and. We put this money in there. We may need it. We may not. Yep. Uh, Scott Jackson seemed to think that we should have the money in place because we're yep. probably yep. going to need it. Yep. Because for years, Scott Jackson was the authority there. And I'm. will he be retiring or he'll be... Sooner or later. I mean, <laughs> sooner or later. So, he's anyway. been doing it for yeah. Thirty. He's been doing it for a long time. You heard it here first, friends. Okay. Um, does that answer your your questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, excuse me. I, I think hey. uh, there might be a, a mistake. If that's if it, sorry. Go for it. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here's Scott. <clears throat> yes, I. We're not required to to. Uh, to pay this money, it was requested because it's getting to be difficult to run the show without help. And so the Conservation Commission is one of the few boards that has no staff support. And the Franklin Regional Council of Governments just recently did a feasibility study of doing having a shared agent that could be, you know, funded by multiple towns to provide a little bit of help for each town that needs it. And uh, you know, I'd be willing to continue on on the Conservation Commission if I had a little help. But after 28 years, it's starting to get old uh, doing all the certified mail and, and, and the minutes and, and, and all the other parts. So we've made that request so that we could be part of this uh, hopefully multi-town uh, conservation agent that will provide administrative support to the commission. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So um, the rumor about you retiring is not true. Okay. Thank you. All right. Just a, a point of order. A related item will be taken up on Article 13. In your, okay. Thank you. Okay. We, we will move now to culture, recreation, services. Um, $178,331 for an increase of 13.37%. Any questions or comments about this? Okay. Uh, there's a question. Um, yes. Yes. I actually would like to make a comment about the earlier discussion um, because there are actually two places where the Conservation 
Commission has asked for money. The money that's in the budget is for education and training of a conservation agent. There's a later article that would actually be for the conservation agent. I just want to make sure that's clear. We're not trying to double dip. That okay. That's what those funds are, are designated for. Thank you, Joyce, for that clarity. Okay, let's get back to culture, recreation. Any questions, comments? Hi, it seems, uh, seems like I ask this question every year. Um, what is the deal with the Tritown Beach District uh, budget going up 76%? Yeah, um, Tritown Beach is having a resurgence. There is, there is now a uh, concerted effort between Deerfield and Waitley to bring that facility um, back. And this is our share of what that cost. So we have Jonathan Edwards, I think, represents us. And Deerfield is represented by... Name escapes a bit. You guys? Patty. Who? Patty Pirog. Patty Pirog. Patty Pirog. 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 Okay, so Pat, Patty Pirog and Jonathan Edwards. Uh, and there's another in, there's another person there as well. But um, I know they've been working a lot of months to get that thing off the ground. So look for it. And I know that they've hired lifeguards and they've hired the ticket takers and... Um, all of the like, so it'll be back. Okay, next is public health. Public health budget is $102,343 for an increase of 7.94%. Questions, comments? Okay, next is public safety. Public safety is $488,323 for an increase of 14.02%. Any questions or comments on public safety? No? Wow. Question. A little explanation on the, huge, on the big fire department increase. And maybe just touch on the police department, too. Uh, I'm sorry. I've, I've been neglectful. I should ask each of you, to, each person, to identify themselves when they pose a question. Uh, you should. I should. <laughs> so starting next time, then? I'm Harlan Bean. <laughs> that was Harlan Bean from Weber Road, in case. <laughs> Cute little house is sitting now. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Um, Regarding the fire department, um, their operating budget is up 31.92%. Um, a chunk of that lies in that we hired a new chief. Okay, so we hired a chief, and in order to hire this chief, we had to have a, um, a salary that was commensurate with time he was going to put in and his background, or this person's background that we were looking for. Um, on top of that, we were told by the personnel committee, as well as the sole select board, there were no other applicants for the position. So, with that said, fire protection is important. And the finance committee went forth and approved that number. Any questions? Okay. Har you good, Harlan? No, I know, but <laughs> that is the way it is. Okay, Pub public safety and uh, police department up 15.65. Somebody's going to have to help me with the police department. Tom, do you remember? I can help. Jimmy's right there. Hey, Jimmy. Off Officer Su Chief Savine. Hello? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so the 15% for the police budget, um, so there's cost of living as part of that, and then the larger portion of the increase is because we're going to be adding a uh, third full-time position. So there's 
full-time chief, which is me, plus two full-time positions. Um, we were able to reduce the number of part-time positions or part-time shifts by almost half. So that's why there's there's not that much of an increase. So that's that's the basics of it. I mean, if you have more questions, we could. That's what's behind it. Um, Joyce, did you want to add anything to that? No, that's what I was going to say. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chief. Public Works. The Public Works Department is $453,739 for 5.58% increase. And most of that percentage increase, as you can see, in the sal salaries um, and that's what we have to live with. Any questions? Yes. Fran Fortino, not so much about salaries, but uh, about that last little item, trees. What, yeah. what is that money for? I've noticed recently a lot of trees being cut down and um, not necessarily being replaced. Is it, this 8,000 for some replacement or what? I don't see Keith. Is Keith here? No. And it's, no. no. no? He's on vacation. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the eight thousand dollars for trees. The eight thousand is for trees. Uh, the tree, new trees are very expensive. All the trees you're seeing cut down now are being cut down by Eversource. Mm -hmm. uh, it has very little to do, or if anything, to do with the town. No, no, but this clearly does. Is this for replacement trees? This is for trees? replacement trees. Yeah. And in, like in the center of town, he's planted a lot of trees in the center of town to replace some of the old maples we've had to cut down. Mm -hmm. uh, how does one request a tree replacement? It has to be on town property. Yeah. You, I would get a hold of Keith. Okay. Call Keith. Yeah, Good. absolutely. Right. Very nice, Don okay, Thanks. Okay. Can, Fran, can you hand a microphone to Don, please? Yeah, I can answer that question. I, I, Keith is the uh, tree warden as well yep. as, and um, we're going to be having a hearing that at our next meeting to take some more trees out, and so he does remove and replace trees. Thank you. My understanding also um, is that trees will be planted at Hurleyhe Park. Um, you can see that it, those old pines are all taken out, and it's been paved. And I believe Keith told me that they were going to be planting trees there. Yep. So that might be part of this as well. OK. All right. Anybody else? OK. Insurance and benefits, $848,433 for an increase of 5.3%. It's the times we live in. Any questions? Any comments? Good. Okay. Unclassified. Seventy-two thousand five hundred twenty-five dollars for a decrease of one percent. And as you can see, what's in the unclassified? Are there any questions about the unclassified? Comments? Very good. Education, three million two hundred sixty-two thousand five hundred eighty dollars for an increase of three percent, and um, we'd certainly like to hear um, thank the um, the schools for u utilizing federal monies to help offset the budget that's been presented. So it would be considerably higher than, than this. Um, any questions about school budgets, about the dollars, percent increase? OK. And debt service, we're at $49,660, obviously 0% increase, and we're paying down on these loans. Um, and we have a very short list of loans comparatively with other towns. 
So our total operating budget, $6,020,209 for 5.04% increase. Any questions, comments? Turn the meeting back. Paul Lynch, yeah. uh, moderator recognizes Paul Newland. Sorry. It just occurred to me, I, I wanted to ask a question about the school budget and how much of that is uh, contributed by school of choice students to Waitley. Fortunately, today, we have with us our superintendent of schools as well as our principal, and we have school committee members. So it would be wonderful if someone could take that question to the microphone and answer that, whomever. Good evening, Darius Modesto, Superintendent of Schools. Um, are you, I guess, clarification, are you asking currently Waitley Elementary about 25% of our population is school choice? Um, are you looking for the exact numbers of what revenue that brings in? I believe the question was whether that money is included in this part of the budget or not. Yes, the budget, it's a revenue source as applied to the, um, to the budget. And the same with Frontier Regional, where um, we use it in different ways. Um, as you'll see later on in the uh, program, or the, uh, you'll see the warrant on the tennis courts, we applied uh, school choice monies from Frontier to capital projects. We try not to use it for um, the uh, operating budget, because as school choice goes up and down, um, so does that revenue source, and that could put the town in a bind if that becomes uh, we become dependent on it in that way. Does that address your question? Yeah. Thank you very much, Superintendent Vanesta. Are there further questions about the budget as a whole, which I believe you'd like us to vote as an entire package? Yeah. yeah. Seeing none, all those in favor of passage of Article 9, please raise your cards. All those opposed? It, the budget, Article 9, has passed by the required majority. Mr. Moderator, I propose that we consider Article 10. Is second. there a second? Okay. Article 10 has been moved and second. Are there questions or discussion regarding Article 10 on the bottom of page 7? All right, the bird is not a registered voter. We'll ignore that question. Um, any others? Then um, please, all those in support, raise your card. All those opposed? All right, Article 10 has passed. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 11. Second. Article 11 has been moved and second. Is there questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor of Article 11, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 11 is passed by the majority vote required. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 12. Second. Article 12 has been moved and second. Is there any quest are there any questions or discussion regarding Article 12? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand, the card. All those opposed? Article 12 passes by the majority vote required. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 13. Second. Article 13 has been moved and second. Is there anyone who wants to provide any additional explanation at this point? Are there any questions regarding Article 13? Seeing none, all those in favor of Article 13, raise your card. All those opposed? Article 13 is passed by the majority vote required. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 14. Second. Article 14 has now been moved and seconded. Are there questions and discussion regarding Article 14? Yes, please. Um, a microphone is coming to you. Cynthia Allen, um, it just seems like a lot of money 
for a truck. So maybe someone could explain if it has gold plating or <laughs> a special something that mm. has it being that expensive or if it's going to last longer than other trucks. Well, we, th <clears throat> we think it's a lot of money as well. And this vote was not done lightly. Um, there was a good deal of discussion, but we put our faith um, in Keith, who goes out and he looks at what's available, what things cost. Um, and I think the truck we have now is 15 years old. Um, it's got a ton of miles on it. It plows every winter. It hauls dirt and rocks and everything else all year long. Um, and it's coming to the end of its life cycle. Um, we need a truck in order to maintain what we have to do in this town. And unfortunately, you get what you pay for. And right now, according to Keith, who does all the specs and looks at things, and, and, and um, this is the way we should, should go to avoid having to replace it in five years or 10 years. And maybe th this truck will get us out to 15 again. So that's how we thought about it. But you're right, it's a lot of money. I see another question, please. Are we talking about a pickup or a dump truck? Dump truck. Dump truck. Well, it says pickup in the article. It's not written right. Well, heavy duty. It's a 550, with... right? Yeah. 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 We're replacing the 550. Well, there's a big difference between a dump truck and a pickup in right. cost. Wow. I agree. Hey, good pickup, Don. <laughs> It says heavy duty pickup, but that's not. It says heavy right. duty pickup. It does. Does that address the open questions then? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Do we do we need a friendly amendment? Um, can we change it to the existing? Uh, the moderator will uh, entertain a motion to replace the word pickup with dump. I make a motion. Well, we can just strike the word pickup. Just say yes. Well, well, I need a motion of some form. I move we just. All right. Strike, strike the, the word, word pickup. Pick Second. All right. This uh, is an amendment to the motion. We must vote on it first. All those in favor of striking the word pickup, raise your card. All those opposed? The motion has been amended and now comes to a vote. All those in favor? All those opposed? And Article 14, as amended, passes by the majority vote required. Um, let me put in my own personal request that the plow be gold painted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Moderator, I move Article 15. Second. Second. Article 15 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, questions? Seeing none, I'd like to proceed to a vote on Article 15. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? I notice the hands are getting tired. Please remember to swap hands <coughs> to continue this. Um, we're now coming up to Article 16. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to take no action on Article 16. All right, taking no action also requires a second. Second. All right, would anyone like to elaborate on the taking of no action regarding this article? I uh, the intention was to take money from a, an account which existed from when the town had an ambulance corps to pay, help pay for the new SCEMS ambulance. However, after checking with the town accountant, this was, the money should be transferred to free cash first and then to this account, not transferred directly. So this is really a bookkeeping accounting Re taking this out is to do it correctly for accounting purposes rather than not the, the money the same money will be spent but just through a different mechanism all right now, uh, the moderator is going to take this opportunity since there are additional um, articles for which no mo action is being proposed to let you know how this works if a motion of no action is made 
and seconded, we then have a, a discussion and ultimately a vote on whether to take no action. If that motion to take no action it passes in the affirmative, then we pass over that article for the rest of, of the meeting, and in fact, it would have to be reintroduced um, from the start in a new one. Um, if it weren't to pass, if there were someone who really wanted to move this then, um, if the motion to take no action is defeated, that does not mean the article is approved. It simply means that we would proceed to a discussion of the article should someone move it. All right, now you, <laughs> hey, now you have a trivia question to baffle all your friends. And we recognize Harlan Bean, please, <laughs> so of Weber Road. <laughs> so clear that one up for me. An accounting thing. Yep. Understand that. That's not a problem. But you said it's got to get transferred to free cash before this is done, and then it will get done. Yes. So at what point are we voting or are we not voting to fund the ambulance? I don't think or is it just going to magically go over and you'll take that money and fund it? Um... Brian, can you get into the accounting details? Yeah, I can, I can give you a little background on this. So the, the town received a capital assessment from South County EMS in the amount of $46,096. And the select board wanted to um, use the remainder of the money left over from when the town operated the ambulance service in these three accounts, so Article 16, 17, and 18. Um, we had an opinion from the Division of Local Services that we couldn't um, directly appropriate the money from the ambulance intercept account. Their preference was that it be that account be closed out and it and the, the funds go to free cash. Um, and the select boards. So so what the plan is um, is for the select board to vote to approve the difference of really these two small amounts in Article 17 and 18 and the difference um, between the 46,096 subtract out the amounts in 17 and 18 will be paid for with uh, the town still has remaining ARPA funds left. So the remainder of the of that capital assessment will be paid with the ARPA funds. The ARP, ARPA funds will pay the six thousand fifty one as well. Yep. Okay. So, then it'll go so the ambulance is getting funded. It's mm -hmm. just doing it. Right. So yep. the free cash will have six thousand fifty one dollars more than it would have had otherwise. ARPA funds will be that much less. Yep. Right. When the vote gets taken. When when it all gets done. Yes. Any additional questions, comments? All right, so we're moving. The motion has been made to take no action on this. Uh, if it passes in the affirmative, no action will be taken. Uh, all those in favor of taking no action on Article 16, raise your cards. Well done. All those opposed? All right, the, the motion passes by the majority vote required, and no action will be taken on Article 16. Right. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 17. Second. Article 17 has been moved and seconded. Are there any additional questions regarding Article 17? If not, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 17 passes by majority vote. I let you know that the next one requires a two-thirds vote uh, to pass. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 18. Second. Article 18 has been moved and second. As I've noted, this requires a two-thirds vote. Are there any questions or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Well done. We've gotten our energy back here. Okay. Article 18 has passed by the two-thirds vote required. Mr. Moderator, I, propose, I move that we consider Article 19. Second. Article 19 has been moved and seconded. Are there questions, discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor of Article 19, please raise your card. All those opposed? All right. Article 19 is passed by the majority vote required. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 20. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Sorry. Article 20, having been moved and belatedly seconded, is now up for discussion. Are there any questions regarding Article 20? 
It's on page 10. It involves the Community Presenta Preservation Act and budget. All right, the moderator recognizes Harlan Bean once again, still of Weber Road. <laughs> Sorry that I'm the one with all the questions here, but could we have a breakdown of what each one of these is? I mean, budgeted reserve, what is that? Um, I believe there someone from the appropriate committee who could speak to these allocations if necessary. And so the moderator recognizes the chair of the committee. No, I'm Judy Marklin. Okay. I'm the planning board representative. Okay. Um, the, the CPA is required annually to, to put 10% of each fiscal year's revenues to dedicate them to uh, three specific activities, historic preservation, open space, which can be also recreation, and community housing. And our estimate for next year is, is I think it was about $190,000. Which would be 19000 for each of those buckets, but we underestimated last year. So to bring ourselves up to the two-year cumulative 10%, we raised it to 20000 each. We're allowed to set aside um, up to 5% of revenues for administrative expenses. That can be things like uh, appraisals or legal work or things like that staff if we had any. Um, and then the remainder of what we estimate coming in is called the budgeted reserve. That's money that is not formally dedicated to any potential purpose but could be used for any of the three quote buckets. We have to reserve these in advance or else for some reason we can't spend the money during the year. So this is a setting aside a reserve for the money we anticipate coming in. Thank you, Judy. Does that address your questions? All right. Are there any other questions or discussion? If not, we move Article 20 to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 20 has passed by the majority vote required. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 21. <coughs> Second. Article 21 has been moved and promptly seconded um, and is up for discussion and vote. Anyone have a question or discussion? Yes, please. Um, let's get a, can you step up to the microphone, please? Or would you like one brought to you? Beth Luke in um, Mitchkowski Circle. I just have a question. Is this our portion? Are other towns contributing to this? Um, the, renovation this, of tennis courts? I mean. Okay. So yeah. the question is regarding the financing of the, um, the tennis court and, the, and this particular fund. And the question is whether there's any additional funds going towards that renovation. Uh, is uh, Superintendent Modesto still here? Yes. Uh, once again, yes, this is a Waitley's portion of $100,000. And what, what we did on this is the school is paying with its reserve funds $200,000 plus for the project. Um, and we, what we're doing is assessing each town from 100000 their portion, um, broken down by the same... Uh, percentages we do for the budget. Does this address your questions, Beth? Thank you very much. All right, are there other questions? Yes, moderator recognizes Cynthia Allen. And I forget of which road, okay. <laughs> Laurel Mountain Road. Okay. So if we're spending all this money on the tennis courts, does that mean that anyone from the towns can use those tennis courts? So 
Sorry, Darius, you sat down too early there. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Yes, the tennis courts, when, the, when school is not in session or being used by a varsity team, are open to the public. So anyone from any of the four towns or even outside of that could use the courts. So if someone wanted to know that schedule, they would contact your office? Sure. Okay. And additionally, for those who are into the biggest craze out there, pickleball, we are painting pickleball lines in the courts as well. So they'll be multi-use, not just tennis. All right. Sounds like a net gain to me. Okay. Oh. Uh, sorry, I'm suffering from allergies. I'm a little subpar today, but um, <clears throat> get that one. Article 21 then can be put forward for a vote. All those in favor, raise your cards. Excellent. All those opposed, Article 21 passes by majority vote as required. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 22. And second. Article 22 has been moved and seconded regarding the steps at White, S. White Dickinson Memorial Library. Are there any questions or concerns? All right, step right into it. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Motion carries by majority vote. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 23. Second. Article 23 has been moved and seconded. Are there questions? No. Yes. No. Donna, may, yes. Uh, the moderator recognizes Donna Wiley, Chestnut Plain Road. Thank you. <laughs> Is this working? Can you hear me? OK. Um, I, I'd like to make a couple of remarks about this um, article from the Historical Commission's perspective. Um, one of the things uh, that is um, included in the Massachusetts state law that uh, governs use of CPA funds is that the Historical Commission must recommend any grant that is made for historic preservation purposes. So. That was true for the library grant that we just approved, and it was equally true for this, um, this warrant for a grant for historic preservation to Quan Quan Farm. Um, the town, since we set up, uh, since we approved a CPA um, funding in this town, the town has received three applications from private entities for historic preservation of a building or a structure. The first was over 10 years ago. Um, it was for uh, work on a particular tobacco barn, and it was turned down by the Historical Commission because the barn was deemed not so distinctive that it warranted use of public funds. Um, the second was last year when the <coughs> Congregational Church applied for use of CPA funds for restoration of its historic windows. Um, and when we received that application, we decided that we needed to add another layer of criteria for applications from private entities, um, which we did. And I'm going to talk about those in a little bit in reference to Quan Quant, but I just wanted to remind you all first that the town did approve a grant of $38,000 last year to the church, which if you drive by the church, you can see is being spent those windows are being restored properly. So when Quan Quan um, submitted its proposal for, uh, thank you, better? Yeah, yeah, that is better. For restoration of one of its three um, really quite unusual uh, silos made, um, made out of ceramic tiles, we went through a process of um, thinking about the criteria we had set up. The first is that the structure has to have played an important role in Waitley's history. This town, as you may know, had many dairy farms, and most of them were along North Street. Not all of them, but most of them were along North Street, and we now have only the Belder Farm that is still in operation as, as a, um, a dairy farm. The Quan Quan Farm, really the Quan Quan Farm and the Hillside Farm at two ends of North Street kind of set the boundaries of that property. Um, so we said, yes, this is a structure that played an important role. We decided that the structure had to be an excellent example of an architectural style. 
um, as I said, this is a really unusual structure. To the best of our knowledge, there are two others, maybe three, but we know for certain of two others in the state of Massachusetts that, are, that use this material. Um, we said that the preservation funding had to result in a demonstrable good for the public, and our, our wording was that can at least occasionally be viewed by the public. In this case, Quan Quan is open to the public a minimum of 950 hours a year. There are other events, usually um, on behalf of various charities that involve a lot of other people. And I just saw um, recently that they've started, um, this year they're introducing a series of free concerts for anybody who wants to come. So we thought this, this really meets that criterion. And the last is that we had to believe that the applicant um, demonstrated a commitment to preserving what is being funded. On that front, uh, the farm has already spent last year $80,000 of its own money to restore the first two of those silos. The amount that we um, are proposing to grant, which is 27 and change, 27,350, is half of what it will cost to restore the third. So in other words, they have already put their money on the table for this, and we are proposing that the town um, help to preserve a very important part, um, sorry, <coughs> I have allergies too, <laughs> uh, part of the town's uh, history and landscape. So I, I wanted to say that to you, and I think Judy may want to talk a bit about the CPA process. Is that? All right, the so we made our recommendation as the Historical Commission to the CPA. Thank you, Donna, for that um, information from the Historical Commission. And we, the moderator now recognizes Judy from the CPC. It's been, believe it or not, 13 years since the CPA, since Whateley adopted the CPA. <laughs> and I thought perhaps it would be useful to review the way the process works. There are seven people on the CPC. Um, I'm the planning board representative. Donna's the historical commission. We have representatives from the conservation commission, the recreation commission, housing, and the ag commission. And our chair is at large representative. We all review all of the applications. And we are required by the law, state law, to hold a public hearing on on any of the applications we feel appropriate to take forward to town meeting. We went through that process. The CPC um, unanimously voted to approve this. There were no negative comments at the public hearing. I would like to point out that Donna talked about funding for private property for historic preservation. Um, the vote for the church was certainly not the first vote for private property owner. We have had, in Wheatley's history, 12 agricultural preservation restrictions and one conservation re restriction. Each of which, for each of which the funds went to a private property owner. So this, if when we succeed in developing or getting an affordable housing project, I'm sure that the property, quite likely the property or the building will be owned by a private property owner and CPA money will go for that. So it's it's not an unusual precedent and I, and those APRs and conservation restriction added up to two hundred and thirty thousand dollars over the years thank you Judy uh, we now open it up to general questions and discussions see um oh here we go sorry Tom I didn't see you behind me Tom Maher I live in Poplar Hill Road in West Waitley. You talk about APR money. Everybody in town benefits from the APR money or the conservation restriction. Giving the money to the church 
Everybody in this town can go to that church anytime they want. That's basically a public piece of property. Now we're talking about giving CPC money to a private enterprise or whatever you want to call it, and you say they're going to be open not, or they're open to the public 900 hours out of the year, that's 10% of the year. If, I want, if I'm going to give my CPC, share of CPC money to the Quanquant Farm, I want to be able to go there whenever I want and touch that thing. <laughs> I don't think... What's to say I live in a 150-year-old farmhouse? I could use new windows. Should I apply to CPC and see if I can get money for new windows in my house? I don't, I, I don't think we're spending our CPC money the way it was intended. Are there any other comments or questions? Uh, we would need a microphone, please, if you wish to contribute. Just seems like it'd be kind of opening a can of worms for other people in town to try to benefit off of the town's dollar to me. All right, is there any other comments? Harlan Bean. <laughs> uh, I appreciate your explanation. It was an excellent one, and yours was too, Judy. I think the biggest difference in comparing this project to the church project is the church is a nonprofit. Clearly, Quan Quant's not. I enjoy Quan Quant, like the silos, the barns, the whole nine yards. But I got to say, it, it does open up a can of worms as to determination of private enterprise was the right word, getting town money to benefit their facility. And it probably will open up a pretty long list of people in the future that will be looking for. This will set a precedence. The church did not set a precedence. Nonprofit, public lands, this would set a precedence. And I'd, I, I don't think it's a good one. All right. Is there anyone else who wants to speak either in favor or against? A friend, please. And then uh, the woman with the Fran Fortino, Poplar Hill Road. Yes, um, maybe the uh, wording in here is such funding to be subject to a 20-year grant agreement that requires the funds to be repaid might ease the, uh, the I don't know, the expenditure of this funding for, for some of us. So can someone speak to that? Is this going to be repaid? The, the point, Fran, is that if the, um, if the uh, restoration work is allowed to deteriorate, if the commitment to preserving the silo um, is not maintained over a 20-year period, then the money would have to be repaid. And the church signed exactly the same kind of agreement had to go um, and to their attorney and have a deed restriction put on. All right, yes, ma'am, please. I'm not quite sure why the committee or the, the group here um, supports, necessary supports funding for a church. Um, not everybody necessarily feels welcome in that church. I know that the people who organize the church do, but there are the religious groups who might not necessarily want to support that. Quonquat Farm is open most of the time, and I'm sure that people are very welcome to go there. Is the church open every single day? Someone was questioning the number of hours Quam Cook Farm is open. But I don't understand why we necessarily report, have to support a religious organization over a very beautiful place that is open to the public. And, and may we ask your name, please? Yes, Julia Berman from Masterson Road in Wakeley. Thank you, Julia. Um, Monty? Yeah. Hi, Montserrat Archibald, Westbrook Road. I think that both the church and Quanquant Farm, um, whatever other attributes they have, they both 
They benefit the whole town. Just in their beauty, we all see them as we drive by. Conquent Farm um, is a thriving business, the kind of business that we want to have in town, and it provides open space. I think they both provide a benefit, even if they are a nonprofit at church and a private business. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jenny Morrison from Chestnut Plain Road, and I would support both the fact that the church should not be an automatic, uh, as some people have sort of inferred, and as somebody who hasn't lived in Waitley all that long, but has known the town for a very long time, Quant Quant Farms was one of the key spots that brought my attention to the town. Um, I'm very grateful that it's been preserved and improved, and I think it contributes in a way that is very different than any individual's private residence. And if people are making profit in doing so, more power to them. This is what we want in this town, and we should support it. Thank you. Can I, uh, um, yes, please, Paul. Sure. Um, just all of those comments, at least that I heard, um, are very real. Um, when it comes to the church, I think you should know the town of Waitley is now on that deed. So if, for any reason, the congrega congregation um, is no longer functioning, um, that the town of Waitley will have first right of refusal um, for that property. And that church um, is, you know, is one of the jewels in the town, as is Quan Quan Farm. A Quan Quan Farm is no longer the Howard Hoxie Quan Quan Farm. It's no longer just an apple orchard where Howard's out there trimming and trying to get his crop in. It's now a retail commercial establishment. And there is no reason that I can see, if you have known anyone that's had a wedding there, ask them what that price tag was. And I, I just, I am taken back that this would even be on the table given what kind of cash flow must be going through that farm. So that's my feeling. And the finance committee does not recommend, so you won't see the finance committee recommended anything with CPA money because they don't need the finance committee to move ahead. Um, with any kind of expenditure. So that's an FYI. Okay. All right. We'd like to take, um, I see one last comment. Uh, Cynthia Allen, right? So to the point that was just made, the town did approve the money for the church, and it, 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 we are now on the deed. I'm not seeing that we're on the deed for Quant Quant Farm if they're not functioning in 20 years. So we have a backup. I don't agree that the church, you know, I didn't vote for the church to get the money, but we have a backup for it. But there's no backup here. It's just giving money to a commercial enterprise. And yes, it's a landmark within Waitley, but it's a very different setup. So I don't think it's fair to compare them as apples to apples. Um, yeah. All right, so at this point, are there any new points to be made, either in favor or against? Just wasn't true. Donna? Well, uh, the 20 year grant agreement would be executed in the form of a deed restriction. It. All right, so there is a deed restriction that is part of this. All right, um, if there are no new arguments, either for or against, I think we've had a good spirited discussion to hear both opinions, both for and against, and we'd like us to move to a vote for this measure. Is there anyone who feels they need to voice an opinion before doing so? Yeah, one. Okay. Uh, John Schumacher from Christian Lane. Is somebody from the Quan Quan Farm here to explain 
what they want to do and things like that so we can hear their story. Uh, there's a quest for uh, owners of Quan Quan Farm to speak to this. That's not a re requirement in any way. Um, please. Mm -hmm. I'm Allison Bell um, from 3 North Street. Uh, he's asking what the project is. Donna, do you want to review that or no? Okay. Um, it's one of three silos that we have that are made of ceramic tile that are 100 years old now. Um, and they've suffered from weathering and decay. And the project is to uh, repair and restore them. Does that make sense? You don't get this money, we still Well, we, we actually, we, we only, uh, the idea for applying for this came when we saw that the church received money uh, for their project. And I, I, we had not even considered it before we saw that happen. So when that project was approved, and the church, of course, is a nonprofit, but they don't pay taxes in this town. Quan Quan Farm plays, pays a lot of taxes in this town. So that's, there's that to consider. Um, so when we saw that that money was available for private entities, we decided to fill out an application and try for it. All right, so thank you very just, much just for like answering the question. Just like anybody else can. Great, okay, so um, we now should proceed to a vote. All those, in, a majority vote is required. If, if counting is required, I'll ask uh, uh, town administrators to assist with that. All right, all those in favor, please raise your card. Okay. All right, all those opposed? Uh, the motion has passed by a clear majority. Article 23 has, uh, is adopted. Mr. Moderator, I move Article 24. Second. All right, Article 24 has been moved and seconded. No one find this revolting? No? <laughs> Other questions, mm. discussion? If not, we'll move to a vote. Okay, all those in favor of Article 24. Oh, sorry, hold on, I missed a question. Yes, please. Uh, John LaValle of uh, State Road. Uh, what? What do you guys want to do with this here? Are you trying to go underground with anything that has to do with utility tie with the solar? Who would like to be able to address the details of the project? Is that on the select board? Oh, please go right ahead, Brant. Yes. Brant Chikis, member of the planning board. Um, so Can you speak into the microphone, please? I will be happy to speak into the microphone. Thank you while addressing my inter interlocutor. <laughs> so one of the, back in 2020, uh, we, the planning board made a revision to the solar electric bylaw. And inadvertently, the underlying text got lost, all right? But it got voted on and approved and thus became law. And if you imagine reading this without the underlying text, from the word electric installation to electrical transformers, it doesn't make any sense. We strangely didn't notice this until this year. And all we are actually doing, this is kind of a no brainer. This is just housekeeping. So I will explain the intent of this. We're just fixing 
this portion of an existing bylaw by putting back the language that inadvertently got deleted in 2020. All the text you see with the underlying text is the original wording in its entirety of the bylaw. The intent, the original intent of this passage was to give the planning board the ability to, uh, when large scale solar electric generating facilities are being established in town, to put as much of the infrastructure underground as possible so that it's not unsightly and a nuisance. That's the intent. So we are just really fixing a garbled bylaw this year by putting the original text back in. So we're not making any new changes. We're just fixing a, a mistake. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes. OK. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Don, please. Yeah. The unsightly oh, thing okay, that we're ahead, looking man. for on this is right now all of the solar facilities that we have include three ugly poles that go away from the road and then they go underground. And we want to get those things into an underground vault rather than to have those three ugly poles. All right. Uh, sir, please. Uh, J.D. Ross, State Road. I appreciate the effort for this. Um, what about the cost implications of these projects? Because this equipment is unbelievably more expensive than stuff above ground, um, if you can even get it. So are we stifling growth of solar in the community by requiring this if the developer has to put in hundreds of thousands of dollars or more to make this happen? That's all. So the bylaw is written to give both parties, the planning board, the authority to do this, but some negotiating room. So we're not requiring this. It is not a mandate. And we, we have, but it, it gives us the power to find out whether there's a requirement from the utility, if there are requirements from the utility providers. But we can at least have the discussion around the financial impacts. But, we are very well aware that if we stifle solar development in town, that will create other problems. Okay. So to summarize, this is an opportunity to dig deeper, if they wish. Um. <laughs> All right, let, with that, let me remind you, a two-thirds vote is required for this article to pass. Are there other questions before we proceed to a vote? Uh, if not, all those in favor of Article 24, raise your card. All those opposed, the motion is passed by the two-thirds required. Mr. Moderator, I move that we consider Article 25. Second. Article 25 has been moved and seconded. Are there questions to be posed regarding Article 25? Uh, over here. Yes, Can we please. we get an explanation? Uh, we'll look for an explanation on this. And Brent, do you want to start? Simplify it. So with the abandonment of the water district as a public water supply in Waitley, we, we as the planning board needed to review the aquifer protection district bylaw and remove language related to, specifically related to the now abandoned water district. And so all the deletions that you can see, the cross outs, the strikeouts here, just are removing language that only applies to the water district, which no longer exists, and obviously fixing the grammar and so forth so that the, what's left is specific to the water department. So again, like the one we just did, this is a rep this is a cleanup. We're kind of use cleaning up the aquifer. I know you've got a joke here, <laughs> but anyway, we're just cleaning it up. That's it. That's right. Thanks. Yeah. So let me ask. You think the efforts would be well worth it? Uh, oh. Okay. Great. Okay. Are there other questions about Article Twenty Five? There are three wells. There are three wells. Okay. Well, well, well. Seeing then, no further questions. Let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed, 
The article has passed by the two-thirds required. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 26. Second. Article 26 has been moved and seconded. There is a copy of the map this article pertains to that was distributed with your materials. Um, are there a two-thirds vote is required for the changes that are listed here? Are there any questions for the planning board uh, regarding those changes? I'm not seeing any. Oh, here we go. Don Skrowski, Christian Lane. I'm just wondering why the changes. <laughs> so actually, there, there are no, the, 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 the changes to the map are just to adjust, once again, the, or the map that's being replaced has errors in it that we have uncovered in our work. Uh, for example, um, for Mieskowski Circle uh, and for um, the Pine Plains development, the old map was in error showing portions of those as being an AR2 versus AR1. So again, we're not rezoning anything. So nobody should come away believing that this map represents any new zoning actions or changing zones. We're simply uh, re fixing the map so that it properly shows all the zones in town. And while we were doing it, we turned this map into at least what I think of as kind of a thing of beauty. It's much easier to read, um, better use of colors. There's going to be an online geograph GIS system where people can see the boundaries more precisely. So we've made a lot of improvements to the map without changing any zoning. Further questions regarding this map of beauty? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed? Article has passed by the two-thirds majority required. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote to take no action on Article 27. Second. Okay, Article 27 has been moved and second for a motion of no action. Uh, I have also been informed that the entity that originally requested this has withdrawn their request. Are there any uh, anyone who would like to discuss or ask further about this motion for no action? The consequence will be that we will pass it over and it will not be uh, considered for adoption. All right. All those in favor of a, mo a motion to take no action, raise your card. All those opposed? The motion to take no action has passed. The article will now be passed over. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote to take no action on Article 28. Second. All right, this is the same story. Another motion for no action, also requested by uh, the original property owner and now withdrawn. All those in favor of taking no action, raise your card. All those opposed? The motion to take no action has passed and the article is not taken up. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town take up Article 29. Second it. Article 29 has been moved and seconded. And we will now open it up for general discussion. This is the last article. It's now 7.30. Let me remind you, sunset is at 8.30. OK. Yes, please go ahead. Get a live microphone. Thank you. I have a comment from Keith Bardwell in absentia. 
The current makeup and composition of the town's personnel policies was created in 1991. When I began working for the town, we had a single sheet of paper that outlined all of the policies. As time went on, it became apparent that we needed more, and the town hired a consultant who met with the town personnel, and from there, based on the town's needs and sample policies from other similar towns, an extensive policy was put into place. In doing so, the makeup of the five-member committee, two residents at large, one select board rep, one finance committee rep, and one town employee rep, and the town administrator as ex officio. There are many responsibilities the committee is required to review and make recommendations to the select board. To name a few, job descriptions, updating policies as regulations change, grievance procedures, and many more. Typically, the committee meets six to eight okay. times per year, with the majority of the meetings prior and leading up to the annual town meeting. As you know, a petition article has been submitted. This article to establish a second personnel committee offers no guidance on the roles or responsibilities of the members. It creates duplication with no means to carry out or implement any recommendations. To further look at the article and its makeup, offering no employee representation begs the question who will advocate for the town's employees. Presently, the school union has an employee representation, and to suggest that those employees would agree to no representation is no different as to why the non-school employees would agree to no representation. Should this somehow pass, it will lead the employees to reach out to unions to unionize, as some towns have done. This petition article is poorly written and thought out. With no ch charge, it is a powerless committee. As with all things, it is always good to review and make improvements to our operations, but this article will do nothing of the such. All right, we're now open to other comments, qu questions, discussion. Question all right, uh, Don Skrosky, please. You're catching up on Harlan Bean, but you still have a few more questions. Well, I was his mentor. Yeah. <laughs> He was a student of mine at one time. <laughs> and my catcher on a little league team. <laughs> that aside. Uh, maybe we could hear from the petitioners why they brought this forth. Well, is there a position or who would like to bring it forth? That would be me. Um, this is my petition. <coughs> As uh, you will note on here that this is not recommended by the select board. And also there is no recommendation by the Finance Committee, because the Finance Committee didn't have the opportunity to review this. Because this process goes to the town clerk, the town clerk sends it to the town administrator, the town administrator sends it to the <coughs> town council, who sends it back to the town. And by that time, the, um, the meetings of the Finance Committee were done. Um, but on that petition, I have four signatures of Finance Committee members, which would make that a quorum. I also have signatures from two prior select board members, a prior moderator, a prior um, school administrator, and a prior town council. This language that you see here was taken direct, directly from the town of Conway because the town of Conway does not allow any employee or elected official to be on their personnel committee. Neither does the town of Deerfield. Only the town of Waitley, Sunderland, and I believe Hatfield. And if you notice, both Sunderland and Hatfield are undergoing two and a half overrides this year. Now, what led us here? What led us here, what led me here over the past two years is that we've had a different approach by the personnel committee. This past year, we were at, they, <clears throat> they approached us with a 7.1% increase for COLA. And when I looked around at the towns around us, it was two, three, four percent. The same thing happened last year. Two, three, four percent, and they were asking for the for more than that. What this does, it eliminates conflict of interest. Currently, of the five members that are on that personnel committee, four of them 
draw salaries from the town of Waitley. So in effect, we have people vi v voting for and proposing their own pay increase. That in and of itself is a conflict of interest. And I would encourage everyone here to eliminate conflict of interest in any kind of financial dealings at the municipal level. We just can't, we can't, we can't take that long term. If, if you think about um, the ramifications of what could happen, and we have to eliminate that. So, Waitley is one of the only towns left in the area that still allows employees and elected officials on there. And in fact, if you go back to that 1991 bylaw, you will see in that bylaw that the town employee doesn't even have to be a resident of the town of Waitley. So all of that is flawed. Things change. That was 1991, this is now, and I would encourage everyone to vote for this bylaw. Thank you, Paul. The floor is now open for additional discussion. Please. I'm Susan Barron from North Street, also a member of the current personnel committee. Two points of clarification to what was just said. First of all, the cost of living increase percent that's recommended was based on what the Social Security uh, rate is and other prevalent rates throughout the country and the region. We look specifically in the region. It's not that we just pulled a number out of thin air. Uh, the second point is there are not four people on the personnel committee currently drawing salary from uh, the town. I, as a member, I do not draw salary, and Betty Orlowski does not draw salary. I also wanted to mention that a few months ago, the town engaged a personnel consultant to revisit a number of our personnel policies, and we're currently working with an organization to do that. And one of the things that we had charged them with before this came up was what is the appropriate composition of a town's personnel committee? So at a minimum, I ask that we table this until we have the report from the consultant, if not vote it down, because it's just not the time to even talk about this. Thank you. All right, so, yeah, hold on one second here. Um, this is, a motion to table would not be in order, but a, well, to take from the table. A motion to, um, actually it would. Mr. Madre, that didn't yeah. sound like a motion, it sounded like a possibility, right. but not yes. So not we need to know motion. whether you are actually making one. Yes, I, ma I make the appropriate okay. motion to not have a vote on this proposal. All right. Whatever the words for that would be. <laughs> that would be, that motion would require a second. All right, so now what would happen here? Yes. I, I wonder if I might be able to attempt to do my job, please. Um, <clears throat> Because there is not discussion on tabling a motion, if you are f confident that you have heard what you need to hear about this, you would vote in favor. If you are not confident that you have heard what you would need to make a judgment, you would vote against. So all those in favor of tabling Right. Yes, you can. You could have any number of reasons to vote to table it. All right, but if you vote to table it, no further discussion will occur. All right. Now, a motion to table is going to require a majority vote. All those in favor of tabling this motion. 
please raise your cards. All right, I'm going to need to ask for two members uh, to do the counting on this side and on that. And so, uh, Lynn, would you be willing to do the counting on the right-hand side? Got it. Just a minute. And uh, Amy's got it. Um, Amy, can you do the one on the left? Can we do the left. Yeah. Can we do the right. Twenty-two. Okay, so we have twenty-two and we have twenty-nine. For a total 51. of 51. All those opposed to tabling the motion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What do you have for total? Eleven, and over here we have one, two, oh, no. three, that four. Was every Sorry, that was everybody. That's everybody. That okay. Everybody. All right. At this point, then, this motion has been tabled. That does, there is an option to take from the table, but I suggest it would not pass if made. And so I want to leave things here. Um, we started to hear a discussion about the pro and the con, and we heard from Paul and Taya, we heard from Keith Bardwell in absentia and the like. And it's the moderator's opinion who does not, the moderator does not cast an opinion whether you should vote for or against. But it's the moderator's opinion that there were arguments being made, both regarding the structure of the committee that would be fair and unbiased, and the structure of a committee that would ensure representation from those subject to the discussion. And the moderator believes both these things actually need to happen. What has not been put forward in this proposal yet, however, is what the criteria would be of such a committee, regardless of constitute as it is now or the other. And I think there is room for a lot of work from both the proponents and the opponents to this motion to actually discuss over the coming year what would be fair references of comparison for things such as cost of living things? What would, should there be a minimum? Should there be a maximum, right? Should there be guardrails? What towns or what should we be comparing ourselves to? And if we hire employees from other towns or if other towns hire employees away from us, should they be included in the comparison group? Uh, the moderator's request to everyone here, in the absence of a full discussion on this issue, is that discussion take place this year, and there be an opportunity to bring forward whatever can be agreed upon in advance prior to next year's uh, consideration. All right, with that, I um, end my moderator's privilege, and I ask for um, us to entertain a motion I would move to move adjourn. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, raise your card. All those opposed, the motion is carried. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.